Okay, here we have Bugs Bunny's birthday blowout for the NES. And I have a special guest with me. It's Bugs Bunny himself. What's up, Jack? I'll tell you what's up. This game sucks. That's what. Well, not entirely. It's kind of boring and could possibly get players an epileptic seizure attack. It's one of those games where you want to beat it once and never play again. Now the Looney Tunes are characters we all enjoyed watching, whether in the past or even right now. If you want to still see some of your favorite characters do their thing, you can find them on the Boomerang channel or search on the internet for possible related vids. Now we all know Bugs Bunny is the most beloved and famous of all the Looney Tunes characters. Ah, me public. His wild and crazy antics has given us many laughs throughout the years. He has multiple times made fools of characters such as Elmer Fudd, Yosemite Sam, Wile E. Coyote, and most bitter rival, Daffy Duck. Now it seemed like a good idea at the time for a big name like Bugs Bunny to be featured in a Nintendo game. So when Kenko made a Bugs Bunny game for the NES in 1990, we all thought it might be a big hit. Unfortunately what we got was utter crap. And to make it even worse, it's a birthday based theme game. What were they thinking? What the noise with them guys? There could have been many other stories for Bugs to go through in the video game, but to make it to your very own birthday party is just lame. It's just like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. The plot of that game is to make it to your own wedding, but the only difference is, is that that game is even worse. <laughs> now onto the story. It's Bugs' 50th birthday and he receives a letter in his mailbox. What's this? A letter? For me? A special fan club is throwing a party for him and they invite him to be a guest of honor at their place. I guess he wants to make it a regular blowout. Well, I better go get the party, Trimmons. Little does Bug realize is that Wile E. Coyote and others are extremely pissed and jealous with the idea that Bugs is always getting some kind of special attention and they will do anything it takes to stop him from reaching his destination. And so, the game begins. When you start the first stage, the mechanics, scenery, and even controls are very similar to another game. The gameplay reminds you of, say, Super Mario Bros. 2? Yeah, you got the life bar on the upper left side of the screen, you can jump on enemies even though you don't get hit in that state, and you can jump on platforms that are almost identical to that game. As you stroll through this game, the screen moves in a way that can get you kinda dizzy. There are also areas where the whole damn screen shakes and can mess you up on making jumps, then you end up falling to your doom. Exactly my point, Bugs. Now Bugs can hit his enemies and other obstacles with his mallet, but if he gets hit, stars start to show above his head for like 5 to 10 seconds, and he is unable to attack, which really starts to get annoying after a while. There's a few types of items to get in this game, but most of them being carrots, which I'm assuming is similar to collecting coins, but I never made the count past 99 to see if you get a 1-up. There's also a big heart which will heal your life completely, maxing your life to 3 hearts. Then there's this item which I don't know what the hell it looks like, but if you get it, the music changes and you can jump much higher now. But who the hell is Bugs Bunny trying to be like? Michael Jordan? And speaking of which, they were in a movie together back in 1996. Now I have mixed feelings about the enemies in this game. Some are known as hell like these exploding clocks, and once they explode, more take their place, but only in certain areas of the game. The same goes for the stalagmites falling rocks, and bouncing set of balls that change color, indicating which colors you're not supposed to touch, and vice versa. However, there are these floating orange enemies that if you hit them, they will always give you a heart. How generous of them. Thanks a lot, Doc. I also like to stress the fact that some levels of the game like to piss you off by playing tricks on you. Like the collapsing desert at the beginning of stage 2 round 1, and you're gonna end up dying without realizing it. In stage 6 round 3 is apparently where you'll get hit the most, if not die, because there's so much bullshit happening, it's not even funny. BULLSHIT! The conveyor belts are also a real problem, because you never know which direction they're going in until it's too late. BULLSHIT! Here's some more bullshit from this stage. Bullshit! 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 
so you get the idea. There's a whole bunch of traps and stuff awaiting you. But the game is so damn easy, you'll have enough lives to get through with it. But still, why did they make this stage so damn impossible? This is an outrage. I demand an explanation. I don't think there is an explanation. It's just process of elimination. You just jump over those 14 traps and avoid a whole bunch of stuff falling on top of you. That's all. I get the idea. <laughs> Every time you complete a round, you get one or two bonus stages. First is some sort of slots game. Just press the damn button. I don't care what number it falls on, but you have five chances to do it in. Three in a row gets you one up. Four in a row gets you five lives. And get this. If you manage to get five in a row, the game gives you 50 lives. Can you name any other video game that has been that generous with the lives? If you manage to get 50 lives, you have a absolutely no excuse to see a game over screen since the game is easy enough to beat as it is. The second bonus stage is some kind of whack the weasel game. You hit a number of weasels and then gain a life for each set within a certain time limit. The bad thing about these bonus stages is that you must go through them. But Chemical, come on, it was it that necessary to have a bonus age after every damn round? Why the noise with them guys? Then we come to the boss fights. Every boss is a Looney Tunes character. Some you face multiple times over, while others are a one-time thing. So that's the way he wants to play, huh? I almost forgot Daffy was joining us for this little segment. Daffy is also one of the bosses you encounter in the game, but unlike the other Looney Tunes, he's the only one you cannot hit. It's the end of the stage, there's a Looney Tunes character in your way, so common sense would tell you that you have to beat him, but when you try to, you seem to miss and he ends up hitting you. Aw, oh, shucks. I can't stand to see a dumb animal suffer. It's not until late until I realize that you have to get the giant carrot instead. But to get it, you have to get these carrots first, and they'll turn into these WB signs, and then you can jump on them, make your way to the carrot itself, and then you automatically you end up being Daffy. Now he tells us! And then you keep encountering Daffy again, and again, and again. And it always seems like every time you encounter Daffy, there's always this rabbit season sign. I thought it was duck season. So the last time you encounter Daffy will be at the end of stage 6 round 3 for the 11th time in the game. That's right, you encounter a worthless boss 11 freaking times total. What a sad disappointment. Oh, you again. <laughs> now to get this carrot for the last time is somewhat difficult. There's a ledge to get to the giant carrot. But the ceiling is so damn close to you, it seems like you're not gonna make it. But if all else fails, try it anyways. Are you nuts? But Bugs really has no other choice. So he attempts to get the carrot, and what do you know, he still makes it. You're despicable. Thanks for joining us, Daffy. Now after you beat the last boss Taz by knocking the football back at him six times, you'll get the ending. What a thunderous cheer and loud applause he's received from his fan club, who later reveals to be the same Looney Tunes characters he's had to beat, saying that they were playing some funny tricks. Yeah, all I have to say about that is... BULLSHIT! Well, this game is indeed very screwy. From the shaking screen epileptic seizures, to pathetic boss fights, this game is still playable, but the overall theme sucks ass. For a one-time playthrough, I give this game a 6 out of 10. Basically good enough to play once, but not multiple times over. I want to thank Bugs for being my special guest for this review. Thanks a lot, Doc! And now I end the review with a classic Wally Coyote Fallen. So until next review, take care.